ಮುಖಂ ಕರುತಿ ವಾಚಾಲಂ ಪಂಗುಂ ಲಂಗಾಯತೆ ಗಿರಿ ಯತ್ ಕೃಪಾ ತಮಂ ಬಂದೇ ಪರಮ ನಂದ ಮಾಧವ ಐ ಬಾವ್ ಜಾನ್ ಟು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬೈ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ದ ಡಾಂ ಬಿ ಕಮ್ ಲೂ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ಲೇಂ ಸ್ಕೇಲ್ ಮೌಂಟನ್ ಐ ಬಾವ್ ಜಾನ್ ಟು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅಗೇನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಗೇಮ್ ಮೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗೈಜ್ ಅವರ್ ಲೈಫ್ಸ್ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ ಹಿ ಶಾಂತಿ ಹಿ ಶಾಂತಿ ಹಿ ಪೀಸ್ 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 ಬಂದೋ this burning our subject is thoughts on the gita part 48 we are observing krishna's birthday festival and first i shall tell you a little introduction of the gita connected with the vedanta vedanta talks about the absolute truth which has been mentioned in the Upanishads. The sages, through their meditation, experience the ultimate truth, Brahman. and in different way in different upanishads they discuss this truth for example sarvam khalvi dam brahma ta jalani ti shantam upashita whatever you see in this world is pervaded by that brahman pure consciousness from that consciousness this universe and all these beings evolved sustain and dissolves this name and form appear and disappear evolve and dissolve in that cosmic consciousness that is the truth that truth has been established to reason in the brahma sutra then how to practice that truth in our day to day life that has been mentioned in the bhagavad gita bhagavad gita is the part of the mahabharata in the chapter of the bhishma parva this little scripture small scripture contains 700 verses which is a dialogue between krishna and arjuna arjuna had terrible problems two basic problems of human life fear and confusion we have those problems all human beings have those problems we are confused we do not know how to decide sometimes what is right what is wrong second fear we are afraid to die we are afraid to do many things so krishna removed those two basic problems through the gita now this vedant this vedant is called prasthanatraya which is just like a tripod whole vedanta philosophy is based on upanishad brahma sutra and the gita shunya vivekananda mentioned that most of the ideas thoughts of the gita are found in the upanishads that i am going to tell you in the beginning how gita is interconnected with the upanishads gita is called sarva shastra mui 
all the scriptures. The essence of all the scriptures are found in the Bhagavad Gita. All the Upanishads can be likened to a cow, Sri Krishna, to the cowherd boy, Gita to the milk of the cow, or the essence of the Upanishads, and Arjuna to the calf who drank the milk, him being the first one to receive the wisdom of the Gita. It is mentioned in the eulogy of the Gita. Sometimes some words, verses, we find as it is in the Upanishad as well as in the Gita. Example, in the Kotha Upanishad we find Urdha Mula, Avak Shaka, Isha Ashwatha, Sanatana. Same thing we find in the Gita, Urdha Mula, Madha Shakam, Ashwatha, Prahu. Abhayam. Describe the universe as the upside down Ashwatta tree, the roots of the universe are above, in the ultimate reality, or Brahman. It is very interesting to imagine. Generally, tree remains in the ground and the trunk of the tree and the and the branches and the leaves, flowers, fruits above. But this mysterious tree is upside down. The root is connected with God, Brahman, and the branches, leaves, flowers, all this thing downward hanging. It is hard to imagine the tree up. Do you know what does it mean? It means go to the source. Go back to the source. We are all hanging. To imagine that your legs are up and your head is down, very difficult. Another mantra of the Katha Upanishad we find, they are this Natatra Surjavati, and let me tell the English, English. They are the sun shines not, not the moon, not the stars, what to speak of this mortal fire. When it shines, everything shines after it. Similar words we find in the Gita, in the 15th chapter. Krishna describes Brahman as self effulgent they declared that neither the sun nor the moon nor the fire illumines the Brahadis Brahman. The name of the 15th chapter, the way of Supreme Self, clearly states that the ultimate goal of human being is to realize Brahman. Again, we find in the Gita, it is I alone who am to be known through all the Vedas. I am indeed the author of Vedanta and the knowledge of the Vedas. In the 12th chapter also, Krishna mentioned the imperishable, the ineffable, the unmanifest, the omnipresent, the omni incomprehensible, the immutable, the unchanging, and the eternal. That is Brahman. The practical side of the Gita is Krishna says, those who have complete control over their senses see Brahman in all beings and are engaged in the welfare of all beings attain me. In the fourth chapter also we read Brahma Panam Brahma To him a person of perfection. Brahman is the offering. Brahman is the oblation, and Brahman is the one who offers the oblation into the fire of Brahman. One who thus sees Brahman in action attains Brahman alone. Why do we need Brahman? 
why do we need that consciousness that we are going to discuss today? Moreover, this Gita and the Upanishad reminds us again and again of our true nature, Atman, which is indestructible. This soul is not born, is eternal, changeless and ancient. It is not slain when the body is slain. Same verse we find in the Bhagavad Gita, Kata Upanishad, as well as in the Gita. Then again, weapons cannot cut it, nor fire can burn it, nor water can wet it, nor wind can wither it. This description reminds us of this straw of the Keno Upanishad, that when the two gods went to know the mysterious phenomenon of Jaksha, says, what, you, what is your name? My name is Agni. What is your power? I can burn anything. Burn this straw. It failed. <clears throat> what is your name? My name is Vayu, the god of wind. What can you do? I can blow away any, everything. Blow away this straw. Failed. Then they could not unveil the mystery of that Brahman, came to Indra. Indra went with humili humility. Then the Divine Mother Explain to Indra, it is Brahman, with each power you people function. That is true. You do not see Brahman, that pure consciousness, but that consciousness manifests in the psychophysical system in three places. In the buddhi, in the intellect, it manifests as jnana shakti, power of knowledge, power of wisdom. In the mind, same shakti, same power manifests as icha shakti, willpower. Some people have tremendous willpower. Next, this shakti, this consciousness manifests in the body, in the senses as the power of action. Power of action, power of will, power of wisdom. These three powers which are manifested in psychophysical system come from Brahman. How can we go to, how can we reach that Brahman? The Upanishad reminds us, practice Tattvamashi Aham Brahmasmi. I am Brahman, thou art that, you are Brahman too. This is a beautiful aspect of Vedanta philosophy. I am Brahman and you people are all God and you people are all sinners. No way. Same consciousness dwells in everything, in every being. I am Brahman. You are also Brahman. Recently I was <clears throat> watching it. It came in YouTube. A black minister, African-American minister, introduced Baptist. He introduced in his congregation the word Namaste. And the congregation must say Namaste. Then he, then he explained this is a Hindu word. It means the God dwells on you. I salute your God. And you also salute me. Because same God dwells in me. It is a wonderful way to Treat human beings, mutual love, mutual respect, those things bring the joy and peace in our society. <coughs> the Upanishad tells us, I repeat sometimes this mantra quite often, Pranabodhanu. Sharayatma Brahmata Lakshamuchate Pranabodhanu, Pranab means Om, is the bow. Shari Atma, this individual soul, is the arrow. Brahman is the target. Hit it without any mistake. That means this individual Atman soul will be one with Brahman, Kaspi consciousness. That is Mukti. 
that is liberation according to vedanta as long as you think you are separated from brahman from god you are bound you are in bondage all joy all peace come from liberation not from bondage krishna also mentioned oh arjuna there is nothing higher than me in this universe all this is a strung in me as a row of jewels on a thread that is a beautiful expression sutre muni gana ibo as you have seen the gems and jewels are connected with a thread or a chain and people use the necklace so each individual being is like a jewel connected with god you know when we read this scripture it reminds us that we are always connected with god but we forget that is the cause of our misery that forgetfulness comes from ignorance maya krishna further reminds us with the mind harmonized by yoga he sees the atman abiding in all beings and all beings in the atman thus he treats all with equal regard one who sees me brahman or god everywhere and sees everything in me he never gets separated from me nor do i get separated from him that is the way we feel when we become yogi the yogi is always feel that we are connected with god the source then we get peace and joy i sometimes see people if you go to a perfume shop you like it or don't like it the fragrance will penetrate through your nostril you cannot stop it if you go and stand near the ocean the gentle breeze will soothe your body and you cannot help it it comes automatically similarly those who are yogis they get this connection with god all the time they can their bodies are the mobile shrines do enjoy festivity all the time nitto utsav bhave tesham they all the time they feel enjoy festivity joy but we are miserable why we are disconnected if this switch of this light is disconnected it will be dark but the moment it is connected it brings light when we are connected with god we get inspiration we get joy we get wisdom light consciousness that is the way spiritual life is very vital in human life that is my introduction now i shall go to the gita chapter 5 that is the sannyasa yoga the yoga of renunciation we shall start with the verse 15 nadatte kwasachit papam na chaiva sukritam vibhu agyane navritam gyanam tena muhyanti yantava the omnipresent divine does not take the merit and demerit of any one knowledge is enveloped by ignorance hence do beings get deluded before i discuss this verse i shall tell you the previous verse then you will get the connection na kurtritam na karmani lokaisa srijyati prabhu na karma phalo sangyagam sabavastu pravartate neither agency nor actions does the lord create for the world nor does he bring about the union with the fruit of action it is nature that does it all very confusing this verse god does not do anything then who created this universe 
who created us, who is guiding us, who is doing all these things. Krishna says that God does not do anything. At the same time, Krishna says, worship me. And there are many verses I can quote to you. Arjuna, I dwell in the heart of human beings as Jantra Rurani Mayaya. As you have seen merry go round, the children rotate. So I rotate all these human beings in this universe. I am the creator. I, I do this, I do this. Even the Krishna in the Gita, you will find a lot of I. A lot of ego. But that ego of Krishna is not raw ego. That is ripe ego. Pakami, kachami. Ripe ego is ego that is the high ego of Brahman. <clears throat> what is this creation? Vedanta says, Mitta. Mitta means it is illusion. Well, my hunger, my thirst, my headache, all these things are illusion. My husband, my wife, my children, all these things are illusion. How will you explain? For the reason Vedanta believes Shatta, four kinds of existence. First, Tuchya Shatta, the thing which does not exist. The horn of a hair, horn of a man, it does not exist. Dabharik Shatta, empirical existence, my hunger, my thirst, my headache, my husband, my wife, children, they are true. Then Pratibhashik Shatta, the existence, <coughs> it appears like dream. When we dream, when which is so true, real to us, the moment our sleep breaks, dream breaks, why does those things go? It is all in the mind. Dream comes in the mind and vanishes in the mind. That is called Pratibhashi, appears like. And then Paramarthik Shatta, absolute existence. If these things, some people get confused how these things will go. Paramarthik, Bhavarik. For the reason our brother in the Upanishad tells, Satisya Saitam, which is the truth of the truth. My hunger, my thirst, my headache, these are true, but not absolute truth. My hunger, thirst sometimes disappear. My headache goes away. <clears throat> truth means the thing which exists all the time. So these things do not exist all the time. <coughs> so, this truth is relative truth, not absolute truth. My husband, my wife, my children, my family, they're not absolute truth. We came, I came alone, I shall go alone. My father, mother, my wife, children, nobody will go with me. It is true. I love my mother, I love my son, I love my friend. Nobody will go with me. I came alone, I shall go alone. So what is the truth? But at the same time, we are relatives. We feel so much bond, so much attachment. But they are not absolute. Sanjoga viprajoganta maranantancha jivitam. It is in the Sri Parbham of the Mahabharata. 
when after the mahabharata war dhritarashtra gandhari all kunti all are crying vasha was consoling them after reunion there is separation after birth there is death these are all inevitable why are you crying so this truth is not absolute truth really absolute truth is brahman god nirgun nirakar formless without qualities ajo birthless deathless immortal that is brahman that is ultimate truth now krishna is talking this place from the paramarthic standpoint from the absolute standpoint not a relative standpoint he says shababastu pravartate sha sha means your bhava thought idea shababa means nature my nature is forcing me what is this nature this nature is the mother divine mother that nature is ishvara god not brahman you see that is the tricks of vedanta vedanta separated god and brahman brahman is the absolute god shagun brahman on brahman with consists of three gunas shatra rajas and tamas at that time ishvara creates preserves just rises so that ishvara it is god who created all these things not brahman because there is no action there action begins from shakti that is mahamaya divine mother that is prakriti that you will have to understand you have two shatta paramarthik shatta vyavaharik shatta paramarthik shatta in you in me is the atman consciousness pure consciousness action this and what is the vyavaharik shatta when that atma becomes jivatma when that consciousness mix with the subtle body it becomes jivatma this is to be understood that what is happening inside me and in the cosmic setup inside me there is sri ram krishna said two persons live in the spaji one is the divine mother another is the jivati it is the jivati who had this cancer it is you know we do not we do the three spiritual disciplines we learn how to separate the body and the atman but do you know what is our problem our problem is we are mixed up vedanta says shakti shakti man abhida here is ravi shankar he is a great musician his music talent and his body mind organism are interconnected he cannot separate them so ishwara god and his power are together they cannot separate it shakti shaktiman abhid but when we realize god when i get the knowledge then at that time i think this i am not the body not the mind not the senses chidananda rupa shivo aham shivo aham i am that ultimate truth i am shiva i am shiva it is all comes from knowledge from that experience we do not have knowledge we are ignorant for the reason we think this is my body i am swami i am chetananda i am this i am that and my whole consciousness is connected with my body mind organism that is the problem a relative truth not absolute truth absolute truly i am brahman i am that atman atman and brahman are the same so who is doing all these things this drama try to think this world is a stage and we are all acting in our different roles somebody acting as a king somebody acting as a queen somebody acting as a beggar murderer robber all some each this 5 6 billions of people are acting their different roles 
When your acting is over, you will depart. When my acting is over, I shall depart. This world is a stage. We are not here permanently. I sometimes say in Laguna Beach, there is a hotel, they call it vacation village. So we are in this vacation village. When you go to and live in a holiday inn, do you know that is your permanent home? No way. Just three, four days I have come here for vacation, then I shall leave. This world is just like that. It is a vacation village. You have come here for 80 years or 100 years, whatever you live, then you go. Go to another place. <laughs> that is the way it will function. So what does Krishna say in this verse? The omnipresent divine does not take the merit and demerit of anyone. Knowledge is enveloped by ignorance, hence do beings get deluded. Sometimes some people say, oh, I am just helpless. God is doing everything. Sri Ramakrishna told a story. <clears throat> a Brahmin had a beautiful orchard. And he, one day he found you know, in the orchard a cow. He hid the cow and the cow was killed. And in the meantime, the sin came and wanted to go to him. He said, please wait. I am not the doer. It is Indra. He is the god of my hands. That Indra killed the cow. So immediately the sin ran to Indra and wanted to go to him. Indra said, what do you say? I killed the cow? Wait a minute. Give me a little chance. Let me talk to that Brahmin. So Indra came in disguise and told the Brahmin, you know, it is a beautiful garden. Yes, yes. I, I, uh, it is my garden. Oh, beautiful pond. Yes, that is my pond. Oh, beautiful flowers. Oh, beautiful trees. Oh, beautiful these things. And he said, yes, I, I bought it from such and such nursery. I did this, I did that. In this way, he, completely, he was continuously toiling. I, I, I. Then when he came near that dead cow, well, what is this? Well, it is a dead cow. Who killed it? At that time, the Brahmin kept quiet. You said that all garden, all trees are yours, and who killed the cow? Then Indra said, he could not say that it is Indra killed the cow, and Indra took his own form. I am that Indra. Did I kill this cow? Then Indra said to the sin, now you go and jump on him. Sri Ramakrishna told this funny story, but you know, there is a great truth that I'm, who is the doer? You know, one verse really used to inspire me. In the, it is in the in the in the Koshitiki Upanishad. Esha hi vyanam sadhu karma karayati tam yamibu loki bunni nishate. This verse used to inspire me. God does good things for that person whom he will take upwards. God will do bad things to that person who will take the person downward. Who is this God? In, when you see in your life, holy people came to your life, holy association, good thoughts, good actions you are doing, that means God loves you. Please remember this Maya. We always blame Maya. Anything wrong, Maya is responsible. This Maya has two departments. Vidya Maya, Avidya Maya. Good Maya, bad Maya. Bad Maya binds the soul. Good Maya releases the soul brings liberation. So, good, what is good maya? Meditation, practicing spiritual disciplines, and, you know, holy company. This is good maya. This will uplift you. A bad maya will take you to a tavern or, you know, go for gambling. That is bad maya. That will bind you. 
But you see, Maya, don't blame Maya. Maya has a very good thing also. Sometimes Maya gives you terrible suffering. That means don't do this again. Go to the other direction. Suffering sometimes is a great teacher. Angel unawares. It is a wonderful idea. Do you know why, why Krishna is talking about these things? Human beings by nature weak. And they want, they do not want to carry the responsibility. They want to shift, shift all their responsibility to God. Blame God. Two ways we blame God. In the in the in the Brahma Sutra, they say Boishamma Noirgrinna. Boishamma means partial. Noirgrinna means hatred. God hates me. God is partial to me. That is the reason I have this problem. You are rich, you are handsome, you have no disease. I am poor, I am, you know, full of disease, full of problems. That means God is partial. Both we are children of God. Why you are good? Why am I bad? That is the Boisham, partial. Some people are born with silver spoon. Some people born in a very poor, poor condition. That is one first complaint against God. No, it is I am miserable. God is responsible. In every way, we, we try to blame God. We do not like to take the responsibility. Vedanta answered this question. You are a farmer. I am a farmer. You till the ground. You sow the harvest seed. You got the harvest. I am a lazy farmer. I did not till the ground. I did not put the seed in the ground. I did not get the harvest. On your field, on my field, there was sunshine, there was rain, but I did not get the crop. You got the crop. Why? Because you worked. So I should not blame God for my for not getting my crop. It is I am. It is I who am who is responsible. You see, that is the way it goes. I was, do you know what I was thinking? Last April, you remember there is a volcanic eruption in Iceland. Ashes all over Europe, France, in, in England, and all these countries. Plane services, airlines stopped for many days. Chaos. Human beings are helpless. You cannot stop that volcanic eruption. So this ignorance, Adyanena avritam gyanam, this knowledge is covered that ashes, ignorance. Tenam huishanti jantava, jantava man is jantu, means human beings are deluded, confused, cannot make any decision. Who is responsible? Shabab. Ignorance is responsible. <clears throat> Look, here Krishna says, I do not take anybody's responsibility. I do not take anything. Now I am just free. That is That means that Krishna is Brahman. Again, Krishna is telling us, Patram Pushpam Phalam Toyam Yumi Vakta Prajachati. Patra, flower, leaves, Pushpam, flower, Phalam, fruits, Toyam, water. The devotees who offer to me with love all these fruits, flowers, I accept. 
That is Vyabharic Drishti. Do you know what, what is God's in God's mind? God's mind is to take you to the path of righteousness. Remove your ignorance. So that one day you can feel that I am Aham Brahma, I am Brahma. That is in God's mind. God does not want his children to suffer. No parents want their children should suffer. But we suffer. I was watching one show in California. These teenagers, they are doing all sorts of wrong things in their lives. And it was some opera, some show. And that girl was interviewing them. And he was talking about that the, the result of their actions will ruin their lives, you know, sex, drugs, and all these things. Who is responsible? Parents are not responsible, which is the, those girls are responsible. And when they are pregnant or something wrong happens, help. That is called mujjanti yantavaha. When you put your hand into the fire, it will burn. And it will get burning sensation. I think if I put my hand, I will get burned. If you put, you will get burned. So you should not blame others. Oh, my hand is burning, you are responsible. And some people are like that, you know. Mujhanti <laughs> yantava. You know, sometimes I think, do you know how do I think about Maya? I think Maya like fog. In California, when I was there, a few days in the ocean, I cannot see anything. Heavy fog. But in the afternoon, bright sunshine. Morning, heavy fog. So fog is not real. But the fog has a capacity to create a disaster. In the freeway, some years ago, there was a chain accident. People are going to work and they could not see it. Yeah, you, somebody hit your car, you hit another, part, another person's car. There was a chain accident, 200 people's cars smashed, some people died, some people are heavily injured. Who is responsible? Fog. Is fog real? No. When the sun shines, the wind blows, the fog disappears. Fog is neither real nor unreal. That is Maya. It is neither real nor unreal. So when fog comes, our airline says, stop, we cannot fly. Or divert the plane to some other airport. In fog, you cannot see the runway. It would be a disaster. Go somewhere. Nadatte kvasya ji papam na chaiva sukritam vivu. I do not, I am not responsible for anything, Arjuna. Don't blame me. I did not come to fight with this Kauravas. It is you who invited me to be your charioteer. Next verse. Janina tu tada jnanam jinam nashi jesham nashi tamatmanaha tesham aditta vad tad jnanam prakashaviti tad param. By whose ignorance or spiritual blindness is destroyed by knowledge of the self. That knowledge of theirs, like the sun, reveals the supreme being. Ajnan. A patch of cloud covered the St. Louis to jail. We do not see the sun. But as Chicago, you will see bright sun. Or if you come to the to St. Louis by plane, perhaps 
33,000 feet above, there is bright sun. Then the plane, plane will enter through the clouds and come at the Lambert Airport. We see it. We see many times. Sun is there, but we do not see it. Similarly, this ignorance, Ajna, covered by Atman. The self-luminous Atman is covered by a patch of cloud. How to move that cloud? How to move this ignorance? We don't like to go ignorance, go away. Do you know what will happen? If you get the knowledge of God and Brahman, what will happen? Sri Ramakrishna mentioned, Puja uthe rala. I could not perform rituals anymore to the Divine Mother. I saw Mother is consciousness. I saw Mother was breathing. My everything stopped. So your everything will stop when you are illumined. And who is, when the Holy Mother went to to Tarakesha Shiva to praise for Sri Ramakrishna's life, all of a sudden, who's husband? Who is he? That knowledge of consciousness dawned in her mind. Your family life, everything will fall apart. I remember I used to tell one of my students that, you know, before Samadhi, whatever you want to do, do. After Samadhi, you will be out of the play. <laughs> Then I used to tease her that if you want samadhi, first engage a ridoy so that who can hold you, otherwise you will fall. Her husband says, Swami, I can do that job. <laughs> <laughs> this ignorance. <clears throat> knowledge, there are two kinds of knowledge. Indirect knowledge, direct knowledge. What is indirect knowledge? You have heard from your teacher, you read from the scripture, God just exists. You have read so many books about God, about your spiritual life, you have the knowledge. That is called indirect knowledge. Guru, Shastra. We learn from our teacher, Guru, and we learn from the scriptures. Upanishad says, Sittam Gyanam Anantam Brahma. What is Brahman? Sittam, truth. Gyanam, consciousness. Anantam, infinite. That is Brahman. Intellectually, I understood, but I do not know Brahman. I exactly know what Brahman is, but I have no experience. Sri Ramakrishna says, somebody has seen milk. Somebody has touched milk. Somebody has drunk milk. The person who has drunk milk, he is began. He gets nourishment, he gets joy. He knows exactly what milk is. Sri Ramakrishna said, if you say marijuana, 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 you will not be intoxicated. You will have to drink that marijuana or smoke marijuana. Then you will be intoxicated. That is the way it goes. That is called indirect knowledge. What is the direct knowledge? Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. Experienced. Swamiji wrote a letter to health sisters. You know, to me, this world is zero. I have touched that Brahman, infinite one. I have that experience. This world is nothing for me. Who is, who will do what? Nothing affects me. You know, when you have that knowledge, that wisdom, you are free.
So this ignorance covers your Atman. What you are supposed to do? You are supposed to do Shadhana, spiritual disciplines, to push out that ignorance, this Maya, this cloud. And when this ignorance goes away, the sun shines, this Atman reveals, self-luminous Atman. That is the whole truth of all Vedanta scriptures. Your Atman is covered with ignorance through spiritual disciplines, remove that ignorance, then the Atman is there. That is called Swarajya Siddhi in Vedanta the tradition. Regain your lost empire. You are the prince, you are the princess, but you forgot. There is a necklace around your neck, but your turtle neck sweater covered it. And you cannot find your sweater. You forgot. Necklace is there. If somebody goes and puts in hand and takes the necklace out, here is your necklace. You are happy at that time. That is the way Vedanta works. Swarajya Siddhi. Regain your lost empire. But how does it come? Sri Ramakrishna gave a beautiful illustration. If the room is dark for thousand years, do you think that that light will come slowly, slowly? No. In the twinkling of an eye, the whole room will be lighted. So when knowledge will come, nobody knows. I sometimes give, encourage our students this, with this illustration. Here is a match stick. You are trying. It is a weight match. Through friction, you cannot light it. Through slowly, slowly, sometimes when it is dry, perhaps it will be lighted. Through many frictions. Here is a piece of a stone. You are trying to break it. 59 times you hit it, it did not break. On the 60th stroke, it broke. You tried to meditate, 59 minutes you failed. One minute, if you can touch God, that's it. You got the knowledge, you got the experience. Try to think this way, 59 minutes you will fail. One minute, you can have the experience. 59 particles of sugar I took away from you. Only one particle I put on your tongue and you will tell me, Swami, sugar tastes sweet. That is the way Vedanta functions. Shadhana, spiritual disciplines. Again and again. Abhyasenatuk kaunteya bairagyana cha goikrichate. Repetition of practice and non-attachment. That will bring illumination. Sometimes uh, one of my teachers used to tell us, do you, if you live with the sun, do you have the knowledge of the light? Or do you have the knowledge of the darkness? You don't. If you continuously travel with the sun, God, in his chariot, all the time you see light. But you do not have the knowledge of neither light nor... You see light, perhaps your nature is light. That is our true nature. It is luminous. It is the Atman. But you do not feel it. Janina to Tada Gyanam Jishana, Tisham Adita Prakashaiti Tatparam Shabha, nature. What is the significance of the word Shabha or Prakriti or nature? The Gita has referred to in many places, usually, and in the Western context too. It means only physical nature or external nature. But from the Indian point of view, there is another approach to this subject of Shambhava. The whole reality is Shambhava, but it has two dimensions. Ordinary Shambhava or upper Aprakriti, lower knowledge, lower, 
and higher Shababa or Pana Prakriti. It will be expounded in the seventh chapter of the Gita. The word Prakriti also means the same, Shababa or nature. So in the chapter that lies ahead, we shall study nature in those two dimensions, ordinary Prakriti and higher Prakriti. Both together constitute reality. You see, if you have only the Atman, no body, you cannot function. You need the body-mind organism. For the reason, I always remind people, this human body is very precious, extremely precious. God-realization is only possible through human body. Divine body comes from the result of action. Animal body, you know, subhuman body, that also comes from the action. Do you know what is their problem? They do not have power of discrimination. We have buddhi. We know how to discriminate between the real and the unreal. Human life is extremely precious. And that human life we misuse. We abuse and misuse. Sri Ramakrishna used to say, whenever you are conscious of yourself and the external world, you are in the, within the jurisdiction of Shakti, this divine property. Whenever you go into deep Samadhi, then alone you go beyond the Shakti jurisdiction. So Shakti jurisdiction extends throughout the universe, everywhere in external nature and in the human being at various levels. But when we come to the nirvikalpa state of samadhi, going beyond all duality, then we go beyond shakti to, the, to that Shiva nature, which is eternal, without change, ever the same. That is beautiful. I think I shall stop there. So you see, I, I told you that do not blame God. It is your nature. Prakriti is doing everything. But it's, Swami, then shall I not go to the temple? Shall I not pray to God? Shall I not meditate? Of course you must do. That will help you to come to the God level. Then you will see that you answer your own prayer. Deva Bhutva Devam Jajat. Be God and then worship God. But Swami, how can I be God? Remove your Jiva nature, that individual, that, that I am weak, I am limited, I am sinner, all these things. Remove these things. This man wrote a very beautiful illustration he gave about sin. Though we may have committed many mistakes in life, as most of us do in our ignorance, the Lord will never desert us. Sri Krishna is telling us with great simplicity, I love everyone because I am everyone. How can I hate anyone, even though he commits mistakes when I am in that person? We often forget in dealing with people who have gone astray, that the Lord continues to dwell in them, even though they have made mistakes after mistakes. It is a great art to be able to resist wrongdoing without withdrawing our love from the wrongdoer. To be able to love someone very deeply and yet resist firmly the wrong he may do, who he may be doing us in his ignorance is one of the most important arts we can learn in life. No one can resist for long when we use the spiritual technique of embracing him with all our love while still resisting what is selfish in him. Under no circumstances should we condemn a person, even if he is being selfish and self-willed. It serves no purpose to attack such people. The only thing to do is to love and respect them because the Lord is present in them and to resist them non-violently. 
bearing patiently whatever suffering they may be inflicting upon us in their ignorance. Mistakes are a natural part of growing up, and there is no need to brood over the sins of the past. The purpose of making a mistake is to learn, not to make the mistake again. That means ignorance. We make mistakes when we are ignorant. When we are illumined, we don't make mistakes. <laughs>